Hello, I am Dr. Dermot Cotter, the Managing Director of Star Tentacle Solutions. Welcome to this presentation explaining the purpose of having an ammonia hazard assessment. This presentation will cover the following topics. Ammonia hazards, our approach to risk reduction, legislation, standards and guidance, and what should be included in an assessment. First of all, we will look at the five hazards associated with ammonia. The first hazard associated with ammonia is toxic if inhaled. Ammonia at concentrations as low as 5 ppm can be detected due to its pungent odour. The 8 hour work exposure limit is 25 ppm and its 15 minute workplace exposure limit is 35 ppm. At concentrations above 100 ppm, ammonia toxic effects can manifest with symptoms such as irritation to the eyes and mucous membranes. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health gives values for the IDLH for ammonia as 300 ppm for 30 minutes. The IDLH is the immediate danger to life and health and should be used for evacuation purposes only. The American Industrial Hygiene Association provides emergency response planning guidelines based on an individual's exposure to ammonia for one hour. Below 150 ppm, nearly all individuals exposed would not experience or develop irreversible or other serious health effects that could impair their ability to escape or to take preventative action. And below 1,500 ppm, all individuals exposed would not experience or develop life-threatening health effects. Ammonia due to its pungent odour, if released in a public space, can result in panic, resulting in secondary hazards like falls and trips when evacuating the area. This would need to be included in an evacuation procedure. The second hazard associated with ammonia is flammable gas. Ammonia gas is flammable in air at concentrations above 14.8% and below 28%. In part a million terms, this can be expressed as being flammable in air concentrations between 148,000 ppm and 280,000 ppm. For ammonia to become flammable in air, an auto ignition temperature source of 630 degrees and above is required. In the event of a fire, ammonia gas would further fuel a fire and the result is auto-ignition, which could be an explosion, which could harm people and damage the structure of a building to the extent that parts of the building may collapse. The third hazard associated with ammonia is contains gas under pressure, may explode if heated. When ammonia is in a refrigeration system, its pressure will increase further by either not rejecting the heat it generates or in the event of a fire. As liquid ammonia is heated, it is vaporised and its pressure increases. When the pressure in the refrigeration system increases beyond the refrigeration system's integral strength, components of the refrigeration system can rupture, exploding, sending parts of the system which include vessel pipe components and ammonia itself as projectiles which could harm people, damage the structure of a building and result in flammable and toxic gas being present, which can form other hazards as discussed earlier. The fourth hazard associated with ammonia is skin burns and eye damage. Ammonia is hydroscopic and therefore if ammonia is released, it seeks out moisture. When ammonia liquid is in contact with human tissue, like skin and eyes, it draws the moisture from the human tissue as it consumes six times its own weight in moisture. The only treatment is water, lots of water, and in more water. Flushing the burn with water gives the ammonia an easier source of moisture to seek out, pulling it away from the human tissue. The fifth and final hazard associated with ammonia is very toxic to aquatic life. If ammonia is directly leaked into surface water, or if the water used by a fire service to depress an ammonia cloud is allowed to reach surface water, aquatic life can be harmed. 
even short-term exposure of 2.9 milligrams per litre of ammonia, which is a small quantity, can be lethal to some sensitive freshwater fish. Steps must be taken to stop ammonia releasing into surface water drainage systems. We will now move on to the Star Technical Solutions approach to risk reduction. We work on the basic concept that if the occurrences of ammonia releases are reduced, persons will less likely be exposed to the hazards of ammonia. Steps to reduce the likelihood of an ammonia release include having appropriate systems in place that reduce the likelihood of a failure of systems integral strength, resulting in a pressure explosion or from leaks that may result in a flammable or gas atmosphere occurring. And if, in the event of ammonia release, there should be appropriate hardware and management systems in place. The hardware systems could include having appropriate building escape routes, gas detection with alarm and power shutdown systems, relief valves and ventilation systems that have been verified that they vent to suitable locations, safe oil drainage systems, and all these hardware systems must have a testing regime. The management systems could include having appropriate site inductions given the locations where ammonia is present, designating persons having ammonia training, a tested site ammonia release response plan, and most importantly, there must be suitable maintenance and repair systems and procedures in place. We will now move on to legislation, standards and guidance. The first two pieces of legislation we will look at are focused on reducing the likelihood of an ammonia release. The first one is the Pressure System Safety Regulations 2000, commonly known as PSSR. The aim of these regulations is to reduce the risk of containment failure from stored energy that may result in a pressure explosion causing harm to person and buildings. The legislation requires a written scheme of examination, often referred to as a WSE, should detail the inspection requirements of the refrigeration systems. The written scheme should detail all the vessels, safety devices and their settings for the system. The system should be examined annually to written scheme examination and the results of the examination must be recorded. The second piece of legislation, and most important, is the revision of use of work equipment regulations 1999, commonly known as PURA. These regulations bring further inspection requirements to prevent the hazard of an intended release of ammonia gas and liquid that may result in intended consequences of persons being exposed to toxic ammonia or the result of ammonia being ignited resulting in explosion. Therefore, a written scheme of examination should also include the inspection requirements of PURA and not be limited to store energy as required by the PSSR. As with the requirements of PSSR, PURA also requires a systematic approach to inspections and the results of the inspections must be recorded. These inspections should include the conditions of pipe and have a risk-based inspection mechanism in place to assess the condition of corrosion under insulation. While some inspectorate bodies in the industry focus only on the dangers from stored energy as required by the PSSR, they miss out on the most important requirement to carry out inspections of pipe and components to prevent the premature release of ammonia that results in further hazards, as required by Pura. At STS, we only use qualified refrigeration engineers and designers who have ASME inspector qualification to examine your refrigeration systems. All our inspections are signed off by a chartered engineer as required by HSE guidance. We will now move our focus to the legislation that requires safety systems to be in place in the event of an ammonia release. The first one is a Dangerous Substances and Explosive Atmosphere Regulations 2002, commonly known as DZIR. Ammonia comes under these regulations as it is a gas under pressure and it is flammable. DZIR requires a risk assessment to be carried out to the same requirement as the Management of Health and Safety Work Regulations and the provision of use of work equipment regulations. However, the requirement for a risk assessment is only one of the requirements in DZIR. DZIR also requires 
the current risks must be assessed and where possibly further reduced. Controls to be in place to reduce the effects of any incidents involving ammonia. Also, plans and procedures must be in place to deal with accidents, incidences and emergencies. Employees must be informed and properly trained to control and deal with deflammable risks. And most importantly, a classification of hazardous places must be carried out, which will identify all the places where ammonia is present. When carrying out a classification of hazardous places, ammonia equipment locations are typically designated as Zone 2 and E, non-hazardous areas, due to having good ventilation. However, often during our inspections, we identify areas as Zone 2 hazardous areas. These Zone 2 hazardous areas are deemed as unsafe and typically require the ventilation to be locally improved. Normally places classified as Zone 2 should have ATEX equipment which is very, very expensive. When carrying out a classification of hazardous places, the classification method must be documented, which includes the calculations and measurements. There are further requirements in the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999. These regulations are very general and for ammonia, systems require an assessment of risk due to toxic effects and the effects skin contact with ammonia. Similar to this year, they require controls to be in place to reduce the effects of an incident involving the release of ammonia, plans and procedures are to be in place to deal with accidents, incidents and emergencies, employees are informed and properly trained in control and deal with the risks, and part of the work should include ammonia dispersion modelling to demonstrate the safety systems are adequate. Whilst regulations give the broad requirement that equipment in the workplace should be safe, there is also industry guidance. The European and UK recognised published guidance is EN378, which has four parts. The EN378 standards are very broad and focus on the design of refrigeration systems and detail where and where not ammonia use is allowed and provides some of the requirements of the safety systems. However, EN378 is only one of many European standards for refrigeration systems. For example, EN378 does not deal with the normal ventilation requirements for ammonia systems and, and points to other European standards, EN60079 for classification of places. The Cold Chain Federation has produced ammonia guidance for the industry and is primary authority partnership approved guidance and combines the UK regulatory requirements in European guidance. The guidance documents are free of charge and are available on the Cold Chain Federation website. And now we will move on to what should be included in an ammonia hazard assessment. When STAR Technical Solutions carries out an ammonia hazard assessment, we include to carry out the classification of places that includes the calculations and measurements required by EN 60079. We check against the regulations if there's adequate pressure system integrity inspections in place to reduce the likelihood of an ammonia release. We measure and verify if there's appropriate normal occupancy and emergency ventilation systems. We verify by calculation that the relief valves are venting to safe locations. We check the gas detection and alert systems meet legislation and standards. We check that the power removal and safe mode systems are adequate. We assess the equipment locations and building escape routes are suitable. We verify the emergency shower and first aid equipment are suitably located. We check that in the event of a leak in a machinery room, ammonia leaks are contained. We review the suitability of the ammonia release response plan. We check the on-site knowledge and training of ammonia is adequate. We review the site has safe systems of work for their staff and for their maintenance contractors. And an ammonia hazard assessment is a complex piece of work with the end result that all the risks associated with ammonia systems are identified and actions can be put in place to make your site safer. At Star Technical Solutions, we only use qualified inspectors who are ammonia refrigeration trained, time served engineers to carry out these ammonia hazard assessments. 
we provide a comprehensive ammonia hazard assessment document that details the approach to the assessment and the result of the site inspections. Where there are non-conformities, we would provide a list of actions at the front of the report. Thank you for watching this presentation. Please contact Star Technical Solutions to carry out the ammonia hazard assessment at your site.